Why, hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga, and this is episode number 564. That's 564, Cinco, Seis, Cuatro of the Agostino Zynga Show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga. I hope you are doing well wherever this podcast may find you. Hope you're doing good, okay? I hope you're doing well. How am I? Pretty decent. I'm recording this sometime on Friday night, just before I'm about to wash my hair and head out for a night of shuffling my feet and pumping my fist to some deep techno beats. But I thought, why not put some content out before I do so, so I can keep that momentum going so that I'm not stagnating because I took a couple of days off in the beginning of the week. And you know, in the world of content generation, you cannot sleep. You cannot sleep. Talking about cannot sleeping. I was thinking the other day, randomly, like how hilarious this whole like walk me to my truck thing has been when it comes to Brendan Shaw. Then randomly, I stumble upon this tweet regarding this from this guy called Eric Jackman, who I'm not really that familiar with, but it came across my feed, I guess, because, you know, I'm liking certain things and it pops up into your algorithm, whatnot. And he happens to be a social media director for MMA fighting. And he put up one of the most funniest tweets that I've read in a long time. It's an image of Khabib and Kamara Usman Khabib is explaining something to Kamara Usman in his sort of deadpan way that he does where he comes across really funny. Kamara Usman, eyes closed, is laughing from the pits of his belly at this humorous joke that Khabib is making. And the caption above it is, <laughs> is written in Khabib's speech. And it says, he say to her, walk me to my truck. Can you believe this, brother? Right? In the way that Khabib would say it. <laughs> and it legitimately made me laugh out loud. It got me very close to spitting whatever fluid i had in my mouth but i wasn't drinking anything so that couldn't happen but regardless it made me laugh so freaking much and judging by the comments down below other people also enjoyed it and it got me thinking will this meme ever die probably not right probably not it will never die this walk me to my truck meme especially when you hear the song when you hear all these edits from the homeless cats it's just it just gets into your brain and you can't let go of it you just keep kiggling it to yourself again and again and again but it also made me think to myself has there been occasions in my life where I've had a very embarrassing interaction with a female that just on the at the moment it sounded like a good idea because I'm sure again whoever it, this may have been some people are alleging it wasn't Brennan or somebody else whoever this person was that said wog me to my truck to flip in um or my to my truck to Annie Lederman outside of a you know comedy club whoever that person was in that moment they felt like they were saying something in that moment they felt like yeah wait until she hears this right then she's going to be slipping all over the place i'm gonna have to get a mop out right when i when i finish giving her this little bar he probably thought that that was going to secure the deal that was going to be the way that he was going to get this person's gob all over their private parts for sure for sure right but it didn't go it didn't go down that way right and there's probably a lot of extenuant circumstances that are kind of attached to it. i think when you kind of read between the lines i think no some i know actually i had a i had a female commentator uh leave a comment on one of the clips i mentioned about this whole thing where she said something like oh because i think i made the assumption or i made the assertion or made it be known that somehow i felt like the girls were kind of bragging weirdly enough that you know this person was into them and kind of creeping around their partner's back blot not and it was a weird sort of humble brag and that person was like to me no that isn't that's just how women talk in terms of trying to process something that they kind of feel as if like they've been complicit it's kind of like a weird sort of like defense mechanism thing because you don't want to feel like you were complicit in it but then you kind of do because society makes you feel that way and i don't know it was a very clever kind of interpretation of it in terms of like a woman's point of view which is very much appreciated because obviously i'm speaking about it from a really dunderhead kind of dude's point of view but i really do think in a guy's head it never is that deep which is what makes it even more frustrating for the partner of the guy because it seems like there is no way of kind of stopping that brain no you could you can't stop the brain but you can stop the action you might think about telling somebody walk me to my truck but you don't do it because you're a grown-up you have responsibilities it's not worth it <laughs> you want to see your kids right you start all these little scenarios playing in your head but you're thinking about it in your head that kind of that that thing never really turns off in general but it also made me think to myself when you watch past the clip i think part of the reason why because again it's it's never that complex with guys i think it's always black and white you see someone you like or somebody that you want to maybe hook up with and you just 
the first thing that comes in your head, you just spit it out if you want to, right? Especially if you're nervous. You just try and spit it out and see what happens. But in a woman's point of view, there are loads of things that go into her this decision-making process decision-making process as to whether or not she's going to be happy to walk you to your truck, right? Loads of things go into it. If you listen to what Anna Liederman said, you get the impression because she didn't respect the person that was saying this to her, it didn't matter what they said or what they looked like. The respect wasn't there. It wasn't even a thing about attraction. You see, didn't want to mention attraction or the muscles or six packs, whatever guys think about, right? The arms, you know, the standard guy things are oh, the trainers, the drip. That wasn't mentioned. What was mentioned again and again was this respect. Um, you kept hearing her mention stuff about she has a lady, da 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 da, like the cheap way, like again, and the, the kind of cheapening, dehumanizing way it kind of made her feel. Where he, like, in his head, thought walking me to my truck was like somehow a naughty sort of secret, like shh, naughty America, <laughs> right? Kind of thing. No, she didn't see it that way. She saw it as in, like, you think I'm one of those? I think she was says in a clip, right? You think I'm one of those girls? Like, I'm one of those girls that can just like finger blast in the hallway on the way to do your set do you know what I mean no nah, that's not me and it kind of that's what made her feel even that's what made her feel even more sort of like pissed off that this was happening in that time in sort of real time but it got me thinking about times that I've done it myself right where I've said kind of similar walk me to my trust comments and I think one example was back in the day I went to some house I've no I went to like a rave Wait, was it a rave or a party I think it was a rave or a party right and for whatever reason, I don't know what happened to me. Like, I think I was just way off. Whenever I'm on the bubbly, I'm on the red wire, or I've taken too much yak or something along those kind of lines, or I'm on too much yak, <laughs> right? I always kind of get a little bit too loopy. And I'm usually a confident, boisterous guy. Anyway, I don't need to have any enhancements to get me to talk to somebody that I'm interested in. I could do that with my eyes closed. No bother, right? But for whatever reason, on that day, on that night, I kind of, something came over me where I kind of, and I think it was a male, maybe it was that kind of thing where like I felt I was better than the guy that she was standing with or something. I don't know, I don't know what it was. I felt competitive. And then I saw his killed. I liked, I was like, mm, why should we this dork? I had that kind of, it was, a, it was a weird, it might have been even hater energy. I don't know what it was. It was something disgusting that I didn't like about myself at the time, after the, after the occasion. But at the moment I felt, you know what? I'm a flex. I'm going to remind this person where they are, who I am, what the situation is. And honestly, without any sort of like interaction prior, without any eyes, nothing, just I went in cold. I must have tapped the lady behind the shoulder or something. She turned around and I said, I whispered something like, why don't you mess with a real nigga? Or something along those kind of lines, right? And if you know me personally, you know, number one, I don't even say the word nigga in like a colloquial term. That's not something that I use in the way that I speak. I don't even speak in that sort of like cadence, right? Where you come and fuck with a real nigga. Like some sort of American gangster. That's not how I get down. But for whatever reason, on that night, I legitimately thought that was what would get me like, would get me the situation that was what would get me so that was that's what that i thought that was what would get me to get that girl to walk me to my bus not to my truck i didn't have a truck back then i don't have a truck now walk me to my bus stop right that's what i thought would work <laughs> and clearly it didn't i remember the girl just looking at me like perplexed and just kind of walking back to her friends like in a friend group and then just like talking to me and then just trying to and then i think you know when you're when you're a dude and you've kind of got that kind of thirst and hunger it's just dripping from your face just emanating desperateness and sleaziness and you just you, you just you just look disgusting right usually you don't see it in yourself until the person reflects it back into you like you don't notice how bad you come across until that person kind of scrunches their face and i remember kind of feeling like an ant so small when she kind of like grimaced did look and uh, talk to a friend and kind of just like kept the same face like uh, said something to a friend like whispering uh, what this what is this black cunt talking about he said something about and she whatever she <laughs> and then she turned back with the same grimace and i kind of just slowly try to do the homer simpson walking back into the bush thing just so i can leave like i felt so embarrassed but i remember that being one of the kind of standout things i remember going back home on my way home on a bus like thinking why did you say that? Like, why did you say it in that way, in that cadence, in that weird, possessive, almost like viperish menace? Like, why did you say that? Like, why? And again, like I said, let's be clear. There was no interaction prior. No eyes, no flirty sort of glances, no rub, no nothing. Zero. I just went up to a stranger and said, why don't you fuck on the real nigga? And expected to get a good response. Honestly, legitimately one of the most embarrassed situations I've ever had in my life. Um, and again, this was like a random party. So it wasn't, I don't think it was, you know, 
I'm not saying bad it's comparing it all the way to my truck. You can't compare. But in this situation, I would say this is worse because it's a peer. I've always been even though I may have done maybe again, we haven't done in the past, I don't think I have, but usually when it comes to peers, people that you kind of work in the same industry for or same industry with, I'm real stickler because again I think in general, especially when it comes to my sort of like work world in terms of dance music and techno and DJing and stuff. There's not enough girls out there anyway, in general, right? Playing. And I think that's a real shame. There should be more out there. There should be more out there playing because I've always said in terms of the song, in terms of the set um, set list, sort of like putting together and the playing on the night, women just have a different sort of touch. And it adds to the whole real allure. I don't think anyone could argue that if you go to like a Boudicca night or you go to like an Inferno night where people are playing who would identify as non-binary or female, whatever it may be, the vibe is different. And it's far, it's not, I would say it's better, but it's just different. It's a nice, it's refreshing to go somewhere where it's not just a whole set of dudes. It's nice to have that in the kind of, um, in the kind of programming of the weekend. It's nice to have that so much. So, so I try to go out of my way when it comes to people within the dance music scene, especially when it comes to girls to be like cool and just be cordial you don't have to be horny just be cordial just be safe talk to them blah 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 hey i saw you that time blah blah yeah i mean just be safe and i think that's always nice to do in general if anything happens further down the line fair enough but i think it's nice to just be cordial with your peers especially when you work in the same industry because you just don't need to be horny all the time just work with people with it doesn't matter if they got boobies just work with them so i think in that case that's where it becomes a little bit more slimy because like i'm a peer so you're treating a peer like some road dog or no like some lot lizard or whatever right or somebody you might have met randomly in a club and it's like and also the risk reward situation is not worth it right because if it goes well what's going to happen you're going to leave your wife for Annie Lindemann probably not are you going to continue hooking up with her on the side probably not also because it's going to be a bit weird and messy over time it just doesn't make any sense you know what I mean like it's just a weird the risk reward thing is just really off especially when you consider the amount of attention those guys get anyway as a comedian you'd imagine being on stage and stuff blah 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 it's just a weird thing to do overall it's just weird but it just made me laugh when I saw this meme I was like honestly this meme will never die and it shouldn't because it's such a preposterous thing to say to somebody walk me to my truck but again as a dude I can't get too I can't get too much on my soapbox and wag my finger because legitimately I think I've said so many stupid things to people too in attempt to get them to hook up over me that have been that in my head I thought sounded like oh these are bars oh my god they're not going to be ready for it they're going to faint we need to get a stretcher we need to call the ambulance beforehand bro we need to get a bottle of water we need to get a fan here because my god and then when you when it comes out of your mouth you're like oh no that did not sound the way I wanted it to sound but absolute legend and then of course to kind of cap it off in terms of that, I saw this amazing clip again, courtesy of the Fire and the Kids subreddit, where they're talking about narcissist, and it's just funny. Off the back of what I'm going to talk about next, with concerning Juicy Smollett, to see Brenner just sit there and have no self awareness, or understanding that this could also maybe be applied to him. And I think in general, that is weirdly enough his superpower, and what we, I think that's weirdly his superpower in general. I think so. That I just go, you know, I just go because. I don't think he ever, I don't think there's ever been a moment, even during the Ariel Hawani situation, I don't think there's ever been a situation in this, in, in Brennan's entirety of his time spent making content where he's legitimately sat down and thought about for one second why people don't like him and also come away to the conclusion that maybe they have a point. I don't think he's ever sat down and thought, you know what, maybe they have a point. Maybe I do do this. That's annoying. Maybe I do say things like this that could be misconstrued. No, I don't think he's ever had that. I think in his head, he legitimately thinks everyone that doesn't like him is an idiot and everyone that everyone should like him. Do you know what I mean? Like that's generally how he comes across. And you can see this from this little clip where Brent Brian talks about narcissist and Brenda basically is like, yeah, true. Zero. You ever like, met, a, you a, you ever yeah, met like, a real narcissist? I have. And they, they can they never ever like you can see them, it's fascinating actually. You can see them their whole life and they they have one burnt bridge after another they have they have a thousand falling outs with a thousand people and it's always their, their fault. fault yeah it's and never there's one common denominator it's them, but they don't, they don't realize it. they don't realize it <laughs> even after 60 years old they don't realize it it's but just think about just think it's like but just like the btk killer like ah oh, he's a legend isn't he? honestly he is um, I, I, I always say brendan shop is the american dream or the, you know, the Western dream, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, be able to make it with just, z I wouldn't say zero talent, I'm not zero talent, but like, be able to make it to that level despite all the flaws that you have, right? And never change it. Like no self-reflection, no growth, no nothing. Just, no, we just go. That's the American dream, really. Everyone would love to get away with that, but we don't have, we all don't have Joe Rogan as our kind of best buddies to kind of launch our career. Because if he did, it would be, it would be great, but... 
Jesus Christ, man. What an absolute legend. Like, yeah, narcissists, man. They're crazy. They never change. They never reflect. It's like, brother, they could be talking about you. But anyway, we move, we move, we move. So um, the trial of the century or the trial of the pandemic era is finally over. It's all done now. We finally got some closure on this whole Juicy Smollett debacle. I think Juicy Smollett debacle came before Megan Thee Stallion and Tory, right? Yeah, but I think there were the two big events that happened during the pandemic that sort of gripped the world, right? Or maybe the Western world, or maybe everyone else didn't care about it. But in general, we probably paid far far too much attention to this stuff because we were all bored at, at home, wanting to distract ourselves from all the misery of people dying all over the place from COVID. So we got some ample distractions based on these celebrities and these influencers, whatever, well, singers and rappers, whatever it is, when they put themselves in trouble or they put themselves in the midst of trouble at Joseph Smollett did and it provided us with a lot of real entertainment and I think my weird theory about this is that they were really unlucky in terms of timing I think when it comes to Joseph Smollett and Tory Lanez and Megan Stallion in terms of the unbridled attention that their cases got because I think at the time we were all bored and at home nothing to do and also it was peak podcast listening time people were kind of gorging and flipping you know devouring them it's kind of you know what's that word called um when you would eat too much you know whatever that words was on kind of a murder mystery and all that sort of kind of murder investigation he podcast they were going through the roof but you know networks are signing these things up all over the place and everyone kind of felt like a mini detective kind of digging deep and kind of finding out the truth on these matters i remember at a time i was checking out this chicago-based police report blog thing that had like a tracker on it that would auto generate um things that were going down like i knew we were all doing crazy stuff you know what i mean like in terms of investigating everything in terms of his family and his connections with the judges and all this like crazy stuff was going on so that's why i think they were a little bit unlucky in terms of the public perception and how you know the court of public opinion basically fell in terms of those two cases because people had too much time on their hands and they were really invested because of all the other sort of like extracurricular stuff they were doing listening to all those other things in terms of serial killers and other blah 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 crimes that go on but the just Millet thing really captured our imagination because at the time as well you know trump was president of the united states all that MAGA stuff was going on the sort of like um race situation in states from afar it felt like it was like at a breaking point bursting at the seams trump was doing these dog whistles you had the proud boys here like loads of stuff was going at the same time and it felt like ah! you know i think baked galaxy baked alaska and all those kind of IRL streamers were popping up all over the place doing their thing you had that guy with the long fingers um nick fuentes he was around you know it felt like there was something happening in the states at that time and then out of nowhere this guy comes out jesus Smollett, and it's like oh yeah in the dead of winter, I was assaulted by these two white nationalists wearing MAGA hats who said MAGA country beat me up and put a noose around my neck and sent me on my way. But let me keep my sandwich, right? My Subway sandwich. And everyone immediately, I think, when you first heard the story, similar to the Megan Stallion and Tory Lane situation, when you immediately heard the story, you sympathize with the victim. I remember when I first heard it, like, oh my God, that's flipping heartbreaking, isn't it? Because I only got introduced to Justice Smollett because of an interview he did on The Breakfast Club, which I really enjoyed. He came across really charming, and again, in an actor kind of way, right? Where they're kind of, they're fake and they kind of acclimatize to the environment. He really kind of disarms Charlemagne. Like he did, he was really good in, that, in The Breakfast Club. I really enjoyed the interview. He came across really well. Um, and, I, you know, you kind of went to root for him in a kind of, you know, nice sort of like root for him way from afar. You don't really know the guy, blah, 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 blah. And I haven't watched a single episode of Empire. I don't really know nothing about him on there. Apart from he's a gay character, right? On there, oh, he was a gay character on there. So when that thing, so it felt like, you know, it felt like it happened in the sequence. I found out about this guy a couple of weeks before. Then the incident happens. I'm like, oh man, that really sad. And then you start to read more about it. And you're like, hold on, this doesn't make any sense, right? And then you start to get, hear more accounts from people who live in the area. Because that's the thing with social media these days. Everyone lives somewhere close to or knows somebody in that area can provide a little bit of context so somebody was like no the area that he was going to or he went to go to the subway it's like in a very sort of businessy districty sort of area there's not anything around there just offices and whatever and you know some shops but it's not like a place where people just walk around you know outside of office hours just parade yeah you know I mean? it's not something like that so that doesn't make any sense the time that he went out it was super cold minus something you know uh snowstorm happened like crazy stuff was adding to context of it that was making it really unbelievable that what juicy says happened could have happened and same happened with Tory Lanez and Meg Thee Stallion, right? You hear that story, like, oh, Meg got shot in the foot. Then you start to add more context situation, more stories come out. The best friend falling out, the Kylie situation, Tory maybe flirting with her, the bullet fragment things didn't make any sense. She was twerking the, the next day. It all didn't add to And again, 
they're both unlucky because we had too much time on their hands. And then, of course, as time went on, you know, just Smollett's account of the story was made to be completely redundant and everyone kind of, you know, came away from it thinking he definitely, definitely was lying. The only person who really was riding for Juicy Smollett hardcore was Amanda Seals. And she was, I felt like, it, even looking back on it now, as ridiculous as it sounded when it came out of her mouth, she was mostly riding on him off the back of like, why can't we get away with scamming too? Like, it, I think Joe, Joe Budden said it a couple of times too, how he just roots for like black scammers. I think when he was trying to defend, um, what's her face? That black lady who scammed um, Dave East, not Dave East, who scammed um, uh, Jonah Lucas. What's her name, man? Anyway, you know what I'm talking about, right? He was just standing up for her because he was like, oh, we, we should be able to scam too. But it's like, yeah, at the, well, at the at the disadvantage of our own people, whatever. But Amanda Seals just came out of the blue and said, nah, white people will be calling police for fake instances all the time, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Let's prosecute. Let's, let's give them the same energy. But of course that wasn't going to happen because Judge Smollett is a prominent figure. He was, it was a race riot-y kind of thing that he was trying to think. It was just mad. And it made me think, when I was thinking about this whole situation, how sad it is because again judging by the headline as you can see on the screen it was obviously uh it was sentenced yesterday and Judge Smollett has been sentenced to 150 days in jail and 30 months felony probation right judge calls him arrogant selfish narcissist so you know it's over and of course there's the mugshot and the first thing that made me think about I was looking at him sat there with his head shaved you know the cur the luscious curls that he had were gone the kind of angelic -y, sweet light-skinned face like cute guy remember what he, him on the breakfast club he had like a nice shirt blouse thing with the buttons all undone near to you know you know in a really aggressively way undone maybe like six buttons undone with his chest showing out feeling good feeling smooth just really living life at the top of his powers right just imagine a guy like him super talented can sing can act you know smashing your empire maybe go and do next some other things and go, going forward you know he felt like the world was in his hands and then suddenly a snap of a wrist or a flick of a wrist you know He's concocting this ridiculous plan and he, he sat in the courtroom basically hoping that he doesn't get any jail time so he can continue his career. But you know it's going to end really poorly for him. And it's just like, wow, man. Crazy that he did all of this just so he could get a flipping raise on Empire. A show that, you know, no one bloody cares about now after he got cancelled, which, which might have got cancelled because of what he did in the first place. So he might have inadvertently cost the jobs of many different people during that time, especially during the pandemic. You're thinking, God damn it, man. Like, why? And you'd imagine Empire would have been far more successful during the pandemic because no one had anything to do and we're all at home watching stuff. They would have probably renewed it and it probably up to salary anyway. It was just a mad thing, right? Like, because I think the judge even said during, a, during his sort of dressing down, which was aggressive, the judge absolutely ripped um, flipping Jesus Smollett a new one, right? Ripped him a new one, really, really went in on him. More so because I felt like he just felt like it was a whole waste of time from what, you know, him sitting on that perch, basically looking down and analyzing evidence like, why are we here? This guy clearly lied. Admit your fault so we can all go home. You're wasting everyone's time here. And he clearly didn't um, because, you know, I think as most liars, I would imagine, if you're, if you're a liar, if you're a liar anyway and you're a narcissist, you just have to die with your lie. There's no point where you can sit down and say, you know what, I'm from reflection, I put my hands up. That's not what you do if you're a liar, liar. If you're a liar, liar, you take that lie to the grave. You take your grave to the grave. I lied and I'm going to hold on to it. And because he was, he went this far on, because I don't think he believes, you know, that he's innocent deep in his heart. I just think he has to play up to it. Because at this point, if you do admit it and you say you lied, there's probably going to be more questions asked about you and you're going to be grilled and ripped more and probably you're going to be you know not looked upon as somebody that could either be trusted ever again ever no one's going to give you time of day so you might as well risk the opportunity to try and win people back by just sticking with a lie as he clearly did anyway throughout the entire thing and obviously the reaction to it in the courtroom was absolutely blockbuster First of all, we play a clip of the judge absolutely ripping into Justice Smollett and basically telling him how he really feels about him. And I feel like this was, to me, the most important part of the court case of the sentencing, because even if he didn't get jail time, he didn't spend time in prison, which, I, again, I, I'm, I'm in a minority here. But I, let, I honestly think as more time went on, especially with my Catholic, somewhat Christian upbringing, even though I don't go to church anymore, a part of me felt like, you know what? Just let, you know, find a guy, community service, 
maybe he has to publicly admit that he lied and let him go on with his life because this is a this is a kind of victimless crime thank god right because you know he was clearly trying to blame it on some white nationalists so imagine if they didn't find the osandaria brothers and they and they managed to find some random couple of white dudes who had some really derogatory things to say about black people anyway you know what i mean he could have got some innocent people locked up and that would have been absolutely mad it was a victimless crime he did it to obviously advance his own career it failed miserably he's been exposed and revealed to everybody you know that kind of has any common sense about how he is as a person that's punishment enough time has gone on Jeremy. You know I mean? like just let him kind of ride with it but i thought this was also an important moment because the judge said eloquently and very matter-of-factly what he felt what he kind of thought of juicy as a person right and the kind of damage this whole thing has done to his reputation and to the cause that he fights for. And I think it's very important for him to hear, even if he didn't get jail time, he needed to hear this. And I think it needed to be said in front of cameras too. So it could be recorded of like, okay, cool. This is what people actually think of you after this court case. We're all thinking this, even though we have sympathy for the situation in some regard, this is ultimately what we think of you. And regardless of how you do it, you move on. You need to keep this in the back of your head. That's a good question. I think that's the question on everybody's mind. There's some conjecture you did it for the money. Frankly, I do not believe that you did it for the money. You were making, the evidence showed, close to $2 million a year when this happened. I don't think money motivated you at all. But the only thing I can find is that you really craved the attention and you wanted to get the attention and you were so invested in issues of social justice and you knew that this was a sore spot for everybody in this country. You knew this was a country that was slowly trying to heal uh, past injustices and current injustices and trying to make a better future for each other and it was a hard road and you took some scabs off some healing wounds and you ripped them apart for one reason you wanted to make yourself more famous and for a while it worked everybody was talking about you the lights were on you you were actually throwing a national pity party for yourself and why would you do such a thing why would you i, I understand you crave the attention so much but why would you betray something like social justice issues, which you care so much about? And the only thing I can conclude is that, is, and I acknowledge, there are wonderful sides to you. They're, they're very giving and charitable and loving sides to you. But you have another side of you that is profoundly arrogant and self, selfish and narcissistic. That's the only thing that can be concluded. And that bad side of you came out during the course of all these events. That's a good question. Which you needed to hear, Jeremy amazing dressing down and i think a lot of people were basically feeling and then i think the judge did a real big misdirect when he came to sentencing because he basically announced the probation first before he announced the jail time and everyone's like oh my god really after all this dressing down and drama you're just gonna give him probation and community service like come on and then he hit him with the 150 days in jail and supposedly from what i read in the state that he's in you can't if it's under a certain amount of days you go to jail instead of going to prison which you would assume is far worse because you're in you're in people you you're in there with people under random circumstances yeah under random charges right anything from a DUI to a kidnapping to an assault do you know what I mean it's, or people that are trans maybe uh, they get they they're there for a short period and they're going to get transferred to another place like it's the most random place I'd imagine in terms of going to jail. You'd far probably prefer to go to a, you know, high security prison somewhere so you can just be left alone on your own. This is going to be interacting with general pop people. They're going to be ripping into him. The fact that he's gay probably won't help. Like, it's going to be an absolute nightmare situation for him in that regard. And it's just so unnecessary of a situation because it's like, why? Why do this? Like, what, what was the gain? But if you think about it, the gain was this. To be on a bigger stage. Like, this is basically has been one of his biggest roles ever. Is he ever going to get a role bigger than this? This is like a live action movie, a live drama in real time and in real dramatic, pure, pure theater kid energy. You know, the kind of kid in class that was to be or not to be and, you know, doing flipping Hamlet on the table and drumming everywhere, singing, dancing, showing off to everyone. Right. This is the kid. This is the end of it. When when that kind of confidence is not reined in, when he doesn't get taken the piss out of sometimes here and there, and he's let free to do what he wants, he turns into this animal. And at the end of the sentencing, when he's asked, do you have anything to say? Dutchess Smollett said the following. Thanks, Your Honor, that I am, uh, I am not suicidal. That's what I was about to say. Okay. I am not suicidal. Okay. I am not suicidal. <laughs> I am innocent, and I am not suicidal. 
If I did this, then it means that I stuck my fist in the fears of black Americans in this country for over 400 years and the fears of the LGBTQ community. Your Honor, I respect you and I respect the jury, but I did not do this. And I am not suicidal. And if anything happens to me when I go in there, I did not do it to myself. And you must all know that. I respect you, Your Honor. I respect your decision. Jail time. <laughs> I am not suicidal. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Uche. <laughs> <laughs> what an absolute psycho. Obviously, he's trying to um, elicit the spirit of Sandra Bland, RIP, and all those other situations where, um, you know, black people in America were arrested for some innocuous con accusation or charge. And then for some weird twist of fate they suddenly ended up passing away in prison or in jail or under the supervision of a police officer right and most of these cases haven't been sort of um dealt with or concluded in any sort of meaningful way which is heinous right the fact that he's trying to draw upon that but it makes sense because if you remember in the i think in some of the statements that are read by his family members i forgot who it was but some of his family read a statement where they basically said that oh um as part of his character sort of like statement was it, what's it called is it a character statement or character so whatever it's, that word is as a way to kind of demonstrate how good of a guy juicy is they were they were said something like oh he attended um trayvon mont trayvon martin's angel jubilee or something and maybe contributed money i was like excuse me you are eliciting the name of a dead kid right to kind of what to give you to make you look good so you don't get jail time off the back of a crime that didn't happen like what the hell is happening here like really i was like oh my god this his whole family are redacted his whole family are redacted but the hit again for me the most heinous thing on this entire situation is definitely when it comes to his mother not the grandmother i think his mother I, i'm pretty sure i remember seeing a clip this might have been uh when it was when the court case when the court when the court date or whatever the, the trial was over right they're doing those press conferences in the wherever the place they were in i think the, wherever the court I, i'd imagine and uh do, 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 do. yeah so the the, the prosecution or defense whatever it is um the lawyers they did they gave their statements on the little pulpit in front of the doors and then at the end everyone wrapped up and were going home and the cameras were still running and then you saw people that were still in a courtroom started to leave because i guess they couldn't leave because that little press conference was happening and the, they were blocking the door so the cameras are still running and what you saw and then i think the the news report basically got on the camera basically saying yeah here we are they've just wrapped up we're gonna the sentence is gonna happen on this date blah 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 blah. and in the corner the back of the camera you can see two black ladies holding another really frail looking older lady who's kind of like struggling to walk and the news report said oh that's Joseph smollett's mum who happens to be she's not that old but i guess she's got some sort of health complications or something along that kind of lines where she was really struggling to walk and two women were basically holding her up and someone and i think the news report says something like oh she's been here every day at the trial supporting her son and i was like oh my god what a piece of shit he dragged his mum to call every single day knowing full well that he lied about the situation that he lied about that incident knowing that you know she's frail she probably you know I'm, I'm i'm sure the stress is you know as much as stress is affecting him just imagine how much it's affecting his mum, and he's doing this with good conscience that's why i knew he was a real sicko that's why i knew justice Smollett was a real sicko because i think nothing we can say is ever going to shame him into making him feel bad about what he did but you would imagine you would hope that looking your mum in the eye and lying about something that happened like that would make you feel a little bit bad and you might be like you know what i can't see my mum. I can't put my parents or my family through this anymore. I'm going to jet. Like, I can't be seen coming in hand in hand, arm in arm, locked in with my sisters and other people in my family and making them complicit in my life because they're standing next to me. I can't do this anymore. Just admit it, right? You'd think you'd do that, but he didn't. And he just kind of r ride it out the entire thing. And, you know, he fought towards the end. And I think I'm in a minority here, but I think it was probably the right decision to make to just keep fighting and basically, you know, lying that you basically didn't lie and standing on the lie until the day that you die i think that might be the best solution because think about it this way there's still a pop there's still a small segment of people out there who believe jussie and think that he was a victim of a hate crime and he obviously is leading into that so if he comes out he's in a far better position to just stand there and say you know what i'm actually after spending that time in prison or in jail sorry for three months 
I've actually gained a new understanding um, for the struggles and the, you know, yeah, the struggles people like myself are having with the judiciary system and being locked up unfairly or incorrectly, the conditions that we face, especially being the LGBTQ plus person. Like, he for sure is going to use this as a thing. So don't be surprised once he comes out, if he does a documentary, um, some sort of film, some sort of feature, a podcast, something concerning how he was imprisoned or jailed for a crime that he feels like he didn't do for sure or for a crime that he feels he was a victim of as a as a in terms of the perp or as opposed to the perp um and a good example of it is this reaction too at the end of it where he basically rose up his fist like a freedom fighter like he thought he was nelson mandela or something our defendants are masked with the custody sheriff i am not suicidal <laughs> i am not suicidal and i am innocent i could have said that i was guilty a long time ago what a crazy guy in it. I don't know what that lady said when she said it. So said stop saying something about whatever. But yeah, what a crazy guy. He died on his lying sword. I think that is a way to go out. If you're gonna lie, you need to just lie all the way until the end. So, you know, do your thing, bad boy. Do your thing. But God almighty. What an absolute horror show. But I'm glad it's over. To be honest, I'm glad it's over. I'm glad I don't have to see it on my timeline anymore. We can just all move on, hopefully, and just live a far more fruitful life knowing that this thing is now finally, finally over. I hope so. I hope. That's that's hope. That's only one can hope about this sort of thing. Only one can hope. Anyway, moving on deep. Um, we have this concerning Supreme and Burberry. Um, are, do you guys care about Supreme and Burberry? Have you been keeping an eye on all that stuff that's been happening? Um blood like the people have been there's been some pandemonium happening off the back of the supreme and burberry collection for whatever reason personally for me i have a very bad relationship with burberry similar to what i have with reebok and palace i feel like especially when it comes to palace they kind of co-opt that culture that working class sort of like chavy culture and try to you know luxify it or make it give them that or maybe use it as a validation mark as in like they're from ends and stuff when they're not you're from labrick grove shepherd's bush knowing hill like sod off do you know what i mean you didn't grow up in the bad blocks you didn't grow up in anywhere near custom house these kind of places where you got chased around by people wearing reebok classic which is why i've got a problem with reebok so i, I put reebok burberry and palace all in the same sort of bucket for me right they they really trigger something in me because i feel like the palace guys like cosplay guys that i grew up with who would want to kick lumps out of you because you didn't look like them right they'd wear sovereign rings and reebok classics and whatever they support west ham and millwall you know they might have family in bermondsey you know that kind of type so that co-opting out of the out of there get out of here the bravery thing i always thought was lazy as a brand nothing really interesting about it you know it seems to be the land where designers go to die ricardo tishi's tried to revive his career over there and it hasn't happened i've seen a new collection actually recently clips of it it looks pretty decent but for the most part the brand is dead the brand is dead the only people that wear that stuff are guys who want to go to baby showers and stuff or act like they can't give a crap about their family they put on the berber shirt to smarten up their outfit and still put on the same distressed jeans and jordans they wear to go to the club so i don't really have any point with that and of course Reebok the point remains on that one but for every reason the Supreme and Burberry collection has really captured people's imagination like kids are going crazy for it like legitimately going crazy so much so that there's this clip courtesy of this account that I follow called Supreme Drops showing a interaction going down with a couple of very enthusiastic Supreme buyers who are queuing up outside the Dover Street Market in New York and they wanted to basically you know get to the bottom as to who was on the front and who was at the back right who was first who was second in line and for whatever reason they had a very heated argument next to a FedEx van which I think is quite picturesque that really shows you the progression of where streetwear has come to where these really enthusiastic buyers Buyers are ready and willing to debate in the court of you know in in an open space in front of many many fans and many other customers like them in front of a fedex van and argue their point really aggressively as to why they should be first to go into the store to buy a burberry box logo t-shirt and here's the clip of them arguing right now you call it an argument or you call that, you call that a scrap i don't know <laughs> 
<laughs> Two couple guys locked in, chest to chest, skin to skin, trying to get down. And of course, the cops come and shut it down. And I think it got so bad that supposedly, according to Supreme Drops, Dover Street Market is sending back their Supreme Burberry stock after what you've seen in the video yesterday. Supreme Burberry restocking it a bit. So it got so bad that Burberry are like, you know what? We don't want these heathens. We don't want these ragamuffins, these streetwear acolytes to come in and desecrate our, you know, luxury store by bringing all that madness over here. And I'm, I, and I'm laughing. I honestly am laughing. It really yeah, because for me that's the great sign that Supreme is back and restoring the feeling. And just whenever you seem whenever it, you count that brand out and you think, you know what, they're not where they used to be, they always remind you, no, 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 no. We're the only brand out there that's going to create this sort of reaction. What what else can make people fight and scrap on the side of a flipping FedEx van? Maybe some Nike shoes, maybe some Chicago Jordan 1s, maybe. Can Adidas do that? Probably not. Can Yeezy? Maybe Yeezy could do it. Um, Reebok might be able to do it. A6, um, probably not. You know, no one's going to fight for a pair of Kiko fucking A6. You know, what? who's gonna fight over that a couple of fashion kids that go to csm not happening um new balance no one cares about that they're all stoky dads you know um pushing their kids in the park wearing artrix jackets with a new balance pair that's not gonna happen so the only brand that can cause that kind of reaction from young men to old men to grown men is gonna be supreme and they actually smashed it me for one when it comes to the burberry stuff i don't care about it um i think it looks quite cute on the girls this picture of this girl wearing a beret with a little shirt or was it coach jacket on looks pretty cool but again the whole line thing i hate it there was this really funny clip actually the supreme drops posted allegedly of what appears to be rich the kid outside a supreme store <laughs> trying to get in ahead of the line and being denied right from what it seems like of the caption which is hilarious because especially off the back of that whole lyrical lemonade thing but i also like the fact that it's quite you know also democratic but this is what they're like, right? They're a little bit up their own ass. Like, it doesn't matter who you are. You get treated like crap. It doesn't matter if you're a, a buyer from, like like myself, like I've been buying Supreme for two decades now. They still treat you like rubbish. It doesn't matter if you're a friend of a friend. You get treated like rubbish. If you've got a friend that works there, treat like rubbish. Celebrity, treat like rubbish. No one gets treated good as Supreme unless you're part of the Supreme family, Supreme team. If you're not Supreme family, Supreme team, you get treated like shit. And I love it. It's flipping... Um, fair it's balanced we all get treated like shit no matter how much money we give these people they treat us like chewing off the bottom of their foot and it brings me so much joy to see we're all getting the same level of treatment no coup jumping no getting in front of it you queue up like everybody else you get like everybody else and that is the vibe right and of course there's a funny picture of people praying to the picture of james jebbia for the supreme stuff but personally I don't know, man. I just don't care. I really, really fail to care about this collection. Um, I could never see myself wearing any of this stuff again. Look at the pictures where they're getting taken. It's all in West End. This is this is categorical, stereotypical West End drip. Like, I don't think anyone else in London would ever wear something like this unironically, unless you're one of those sort of like, um, what, what's, you know, those people that wear like Versace. I forgot what that, what's that girl's name? I know her as well. She's got that store. I forgot what it's called. They sell like vintage stuff. People that wear like Versace trousers and Versace shades and, you know, pretend like they're in the 90s and early 2000s and they're wearing sovereigns and big chains and all that naff stuff, right? They would love this for sure because you could wear your Reeboks with this and your socks pulled up high and you could have like a gold tooth cap on and stuff. I mean, all that lame stuff. But the only thing I would legitimately wear would be the trench coat, right? This is quite nice because it looks, pretty unsupremish and quite standard apart from the massive embroidered logo on the back right with the horse and the bird like god almighty too much of it and then of course you got you know my man here wearing it like from time you have him on the lookbook you know it's over you know i'm not gonna be supporting any of this stuff ever you know what i mean like immediately when you wear this you start sounding like damien hurst that's what happens when you wear this burberry supreme stuff you start saying like damien hurst but this jacket is pretty nice i'd wear the hell out of this for sure day to day and i think that might be the most expensive thing actually in the whole collection right that but that that looks fairly nice right that looks like some kid that you'd meet who baby Siki. this is like the, the attire you'd see of the manager of garb store wearing right or some sort of like swanky sort of boutique store out in west london that's what they're going to be wearing something like this but the entirety of the collection like you know i don't know man like this is standard west end wear just look at this shit like come on what's that pub in west london all these guys go to that's what it looks like you know you see them outside broadway broadwick's marketplace with their skateboards on the floor and they're scuffed up adidas's and vans and stuff acting cool and trendy because they skate and they got sovereign rings rings
but yeah all of this for me oh the, the, that that's nice that's an, another nice bit the trucker hat is quite nice too i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie on that one i think the trucker hat is nice and this denim suit is flipping heavy especially how they dropped on the model here right skinhead if he's dr martin's is dr martin's or whatever this looks really nice this is something i would wear 100 percent. that denim suit is nice but come on brother imagine seeing me wear this head to toe you got permission to slap me you have permission to slap me if you see me in a dance wearing that head to toe you have permission to slap me <laughs> for sure like guys that look like this again sans the black dude wearing it they legitimately used to chase man down the road in custom house in canning town back in the day like you know, big up everyone that went to Royal Dock School, Woodside, all them things, Brampton, Eastley. You know where I go on back in the day in ends when people used to wear tracksuits like this and Reeboks. Like it was on. Do you know what I mean? So to see that stuff be kind of co opt and whatnot by the trendy kids out there is annoying. This is a nice outfit too. But again, I think my man always looks pretty good when he dresses supreme. I think that's a nice outfit with the rugby top on. The box, box logo hoodie is absolutely box office. I'd wear the hell out of that also. But Hopefully you can still hear me sound wise. Hopefully it's not messing up. Let me just quickly switch this. Hopefully it's working. Is it working? It should be still working. Okay, it's still working. Thank God. Thank God almighty. Okay, let's continue. But yeah, the trench coat is obviously heat, right? That trench coat is absolute heat. Um, I love it. I'd wear the hell out of it. I think my, my, my number one thing that I love out of it is the two massive front pockets. I'm a big fan of pockets. I'm always carrying a book with me. I may have a drink. I may have a sandwich, a, something. I mean, I'm always carrying bulky things on me. So to be able to put a couple of things in the front pocket and, you know, put that over some nice slacks and my flipping penny loafers and whatnot, ready to roll, right? Ready to flipping roll. I think that's a good look, even in pink. That's flipping a bad boy look. That's very Congolese, you know, man, deco whatever look i mean I'm, I'm there for this i'm living for the trench the trench i would absolutely rock um in an absolute heartbeat don't remind me this uh what you got shirling collar jacket long for me allow it miss burn it throw it in the bin don't care it looks flipping terrible um this tracksuit jacket thing um no again leather track jacket no thank you throw that in the bin um what else you know what's funny about this too the burberry stuff this might be the best thing they've done burberry since Ricard Tishy's been there, with the exception of that, remember that down jacket that Burberry did that everyone wore? It was like a down jacket that had the Burberry patch all over it that was kind of mismatched. That was really nice. That was really popular too. But apart from that, they've made no noise. So it's weird that they kind of, out, they're not making any noise with the actual runway stuff, which is what they spent the majority of their money on. I'd imagine hiring Ricard Tishy isn't cheap. But the most noise they've been making is off this back of this streetwear collection that's made them get nervous about people coming to their store and causing a ruckus because, you know, they don't want that. They don't want that energy. But they want the clout. They want the clout of the streetwear people. They want their attention. They want the clicks and the hype. But when they when they see ragamuffins like you or I that like this stuff, that live and breathe this stuff actually at their store, they're like, no, 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 no. We're not, we're not having this. Dover Street Market, we're like, nope, send that stuff back. Um, so, yeah, this... Um, this denim trucker jacket is fire, right? Um, again, I'd wear it in the, the jean colorway. I think is the best for me personally. I'm not wearing that print under any circumstances. I think it's absolutely G-A-Y and redacted as hell to wear this stuff as a grown-up, in my opinion. But again, do you, boo? Um, the shorts are even worse. I can You can imagine somebody at snow bombing or at flipping. What's that festival in flipping um, Croatia? You can imagine some of those guys wearing this sort of stuff, right? And unironically tagging the toilets at 32 years of age it's like grow up bruv you know what i mean if you didn't if you weren't if you weren't you know throwing up when you were flipping 19 or whatnot then you shouldn't be doing it now when you're 32 it's over it's a wrap let it go put the marker in in the bin um get yourself a girlfriend buy a dog do something you know i mean <laughs> like allow it the rugby top is pretty decent i'm not, not i don't mind the rugby top the box logo probably is again the most hardest thing in the entire collection the trench coat but i just don't understand why this has caused so much a ruckus the denim caps again like i missed them the bucket hats always for me bucket hats always look great on pictures but when they actually get put on my head it's always a myth you, i never end up looking as cool as the people that wear the bucket hats when they actually put on myself you know what i mean i think most people have the same sort of thing because i don't really think bucket hats suit most people the decks of course are going to be resold and hang on you know hype beast walls all over the world so they're going to be doing really well and very successful i'm sure and it sold out yesterday too so i don't know what i'm talking about and then of course the price listing here was bananas right i think the trench that i liked was like 850 i think uk the sherlin jacket like 500 like yeah, allow it the gen jacket of course i'll definitely buy but everything else no thank you 
but yeah people loved it people were on it not sure why i don't get it but you know enjoy it if you did enjoy it if you did then next we got an episode here courtesy of an episode we got an announcement here courtesy of hypebeast regarding the air max one or sorry the air max day 2022 and announcing some exclusive air max ones that they're putting out again i think they really take the piss out of sneakerheads when it comes to air max day they know the the, the they know the allure or the fandom people have with air maxes they know that for the most part as long as the colorway isn't as long as the colorway is limited and isn't going to be released as a gr air max heads are going to snap them up regardless so they they do basically the minimum the minimal they basically do the bare minimum and put stuff out that i think is fairly mediocre a case in point these blueprint air maxes that are going to come out on the 26th of march like shit shit there's a there's a what what's this pair called la ville Lumi, Lumi, lumiere shit for me like air max day on the tie like just dead out that maybe this is the probably the best one the premium one again but again i'm not really a fan of it like just i i don't know man i think sneakerheads really get underserved with air max day because for the most part air max fans are loyal as hell i know i was when i used to buy a lot of air maxes i but again like i said i'd cop any as long as they weren't grs and even sometimes i'd cop grs i remember there was a time where i used to be buying um maybe some people remember me back in the day i used to sell or kind of resell not that much of a markup because at the time i don't think people from new zealand and australia could get a pair of infrareds or air max 90 laser blues so i'd buy them from jd sports when they got re-released right and they'd done a really good pair of them actually jd sports that they put out and i'd buy them for people and basically send it to them right just with a, maybe a little bit of a proxy charge on top of it but i was picking up so many of them every single day i'd go to the one in stratford the one in east Ham. like i'd be going around just trying to pick up as many of those laser blues and lanterns as i could because at the time no one really cared a crap about them so they were basically something you would cop as an air max head and i think i had maybe two of each laser blues air max ones sorry laser blue air max 90s infrared air max 90s i had i also had a pair of the corals that were like a women's pair that only went up to like a 13 women's which is like a nine and a half men's that i couldn't get into but i took out the insoles and my feet would be scrunched up at the front like i was i went heavy for those and again that's standard air max fan fandom stuff i know a lot of air max heads that have shoes that aren't even in their size in their collection just so they can have them in their collection so i think nike basically prey on that and they don't really i think service air max fans at all the way they should be they shouldn't don't get service especially when it comes to retros they get disrespected so much with retros they, they're always terrible i always go back to the air max light retro being legitimately one of the most disappointing air maxes i've ever seen in my entire life right that's nike air max light right uh right look look at this look at how terrible this came out compared to the ogs like just an absolute shocking shocking shoe in terms of how it looked like og wise like that is that to me is terrible because you don't see it but this is what the no this might be actually a retro um this is actually what the og was meant to look like in terms of the paneling and the yellowing on the midsole a little bit just some some attention to detail but then when you actually got them in hand the way they bananaed up on your hands was just awful really really awful and i know some people bought the vintage ones and put the old the new soles on them and whatnot but for me they were really one of the high that was a that was the time i think i gave up with nike retros like you know what enough i'm not doing it anymore and just kind of moved on because these look so awful in person they were so stiff the shape was off no paneling like just it was just awful really really terrible and like i said i think they kind of disrespect air max fans um all the time when it comes to these sort of things let's go back to that article actually and quickly show you what date these things are going to come out obviously you know in it 26th of march air max is upon us the, 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 the first one roster is a blueprint colorway which is fashioned with a crisp white blue color scheme yeah, yeah we know be on the lookout for the blueprint to drop in north america while the release okay so one's going the blues are going to america the sort of like grayish sort of like whitewash colorway is going to europe and the wasabi colorway launches in latin america uh wabi sabi sorry wabi sabi wasaba wabi sabi colorway comes out there so if you're interested in them keep an eye on them me personally i think they're complete trash but maybe i'm in the minority in that regard maybe i'm in the minority in that regard let me just continue on here one second make sure i haven't wasted too much of your time here no i haven't let us want to talk about here quickly what else we want to talk about here quickly mm -hmm. yeah let's go about this quickly um 
Ba, 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 ba. What do you guys think of these Nike protection? Oh, sorry, New Balance protect Nike. Too much Nike in my, in my head. What do you guys think of these New Balance 2002R protection pack colorways? Personally, for me, I don't like them off the bat because I feel like they look too sneakery. They look too try hardery. I think the reason why I like New Balance and may, maybe other people like New Balance is because they're pretty classic in terms of their shape, their silhouettes, their color blocking, the paneling. It just looks classic. And it kind of, I don't really like the kind of uh, sneakerization of these. They just look a little bit too try hard for me, in my opinion. Um, I don't, but I think people really are big fans of them because you always see them getting resold online and whatnot. They go for a decent amount of money on StockX. I see them available on eBay and whatnot. People are wearing them out and about. Um, but yeah, I'm just not a fan of them. I have to be completely honest. I just don't like the look of that kind of tear out thing on the NB. I don't know. I want my new balances to either look really Larry or really look classic. But I don't like the kind of hybrid of the two, if that makes any sense. I want them to, you know what I mean? This pink colorway is nice. It was just on a classic you know, two or two without all this excessive, um, what do you call it? Uh, what's that? What do you call this? This kind of excessive sort of fabric and detailing on the side there. I just don't like it. It just doesn't look that great for me, in my opinion. But maybe I'm in a minority because I think these do really well in terms of sales because the colorways are flipping gorgeous, isn't it? And I think if you wanted to, and you was really anal about it and you like the colorway, you could, in theory, just grab yourself a little, um, what's that thing called? uh a box cut or whatnot and cut away all this excess material right around the stitching so they just looked a bit more crisper right you didn't need to actually have this on there you don't need to if you don't want to but again i can't say that because i did i, I remember liking those comedy console air force ones that came out with the excessive sort of material on the side on the edges but i thought they they worked much well much better than this than this in my opinion and i think it's a shame because i think the colorways are really nice it's just the overall application of it i'm just not a fan of i think it just looks dead out like look it just looks so busy on this isn't it like uh, new balance means to make it a little bit more classic a bit more subdued draw because i feel like with the paneling anyway on a, a new balance and the way they're so techy looking and kind of you know whatever it may be they're already quite loud and speak for themselves you don't need to add too many bells and whistles you could you could if you want to go like the mad hectic new balance route right where they used to make new balances and it's just like really loud and all over the place but I don't know. I don't feel like they look that great, in my opinion. These pictures are quite nice, though. Nice pictures. But I don't think they look that amazing for me. I think they're a bit of a letdown in terms of their overall appeal. But maybe I'm in a minority. I don't know. Let me know you feel so on the, on the comments down below. Are you a fan of the New Balance 2002R protection packs? Or like me, do you think they're a bit too, you know, a bit too OTT for the sake of it? Like these won't stand the test of time. Like in a few years, people will be people won't be wearing these. No way, I don't think so. Um, but yeah, maybe I'm in a minority. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, that's Jackson Show episode number five six four. I've got a jet and stuff, so I'm going to leave you for now. Apologies for the short episode. If you listen to this video audio, you hear a song. If you listen via video, you won't hear or see anything. But as per usual, thanks for your support. As per usual, I really do appreciate you tuning in and checking me out. And I'll see you guys again soon. Peace.